Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anima Orange and welcome to another Iconics build. Today we are going to build this Iconics model from Metal Earth having to do with Game of Thrones. Iconics models are usually very difficult in detail as you can see this is quite pretty and shiny right here but let's go to the table, open it up, see what's inside and what it's going to take to put this thing together. Alright. Let's open up the Targaryen sigil and see what is inside these new Iconics packaging models causing me to break out the scissors. For how many years have I just ripped them open? Even had people ask, why do you just rip them open? Because I just do. Now I have to cut them. Alright, we have one metal sheet. Very, very shiny with just a bit of detail. You have two metal sheets, and you notice this is the very shiny side, they're shiny side back to back with the detail side facing away each other. I guess that way they don't get scratched up in shipping, and that has a little more detail to it. Nice big pieces. I'm hoping this will be quick. I can use a quick one. We have, looks like two pieces of paper for the instructions. So let's grab the one that says Metal Earth on it, open that up. Quickly go over the instructions. Metal Earth instructions and Iconic instructions are very similar, but I think the big difference is with Iconics they tend to go in steps, whereas Metal Earth they just they just go. Anyway, here we go. We'll start over here at page one. You got the Metal Earth logo, the Metal Earth Iconics logo, the 360 view. Here's a QR code you can scan with a tablet or phone, or just go to this website to see. A 360 view of the model you can move around and look at assuming it's there. I haven't actually checked. Sometimes it takes a while to get those up. Below that we have an outline of the two metal sheets. Let me just grab one. Looks like I've gotten sheet A. So this is an outline of this sheet with all the part numbers pointing at all the parts so you can easily find them. One note is that a few of these parts are colored in. Most of them aren't but there's like a purplish color, an orangish, and a yellow. There's more than one of those, and they've colored them in, so to indicate they're all the same part. If we look at the next sheet, we also see a yellow here. This is labeled at 16. This is also 16. This is labeled at 23. This is also 23. Not as big a deal since there's so few and so big parts, but in instructions or in models where there's a lot of duplicate parts and a lot of parts, it's really helpful to have the duplicate, duplicate ones colored in, find them easier, and keep them straight from the rest. Anyway, moving over to page two, I have an outline or line drawing of the completed model. We have a sample part over here with a notational slot, fold line, and tabs. And it doesn't explain it as much here, maybe because this is considered more advanced, being iconics. Tabs go into slots. Fold lines are just pre-scored areas or pre-marked areas where you fold the part. Below that we have a legend and some bit about tools. The legend, the E is pointing at the engraved side, NE points at the non-engraved side. Sometimes that can be translated as silver and detailed, or excuse me, detailed and just silver side, non-engraved. And got an attention point, if that pops up, they're usually trying to tell you to align things a certain way. But you know, if I get to that point in the model, I will definitely make a comment on it. Blue circle, green triangle, those have been around forever. Blue circle means to insert the tab. Fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means insert the tab and twist it 90 degrees. Simply tips about twisting. Pull as you twist. It usually creates a better connection. So recommended tools. We've got clippers, tweezers, and pliers. I, I agree with that. But we'll talk more about tools here in a moment. Down below we start the assembly steps. Starting with step one. Pretty simple. We find part one which is on sheet A. So we can go over here and look on sheet A for part one. There it is. And we clip that out and we find part two, which is also on sheet A. And this is kind of, it looks like it's indicating to kind of bend or curve it a little. And then the two come together. In this part, optional, give a wing, give the wing a very subtle bend outward for a more 3D appearance. Sorry, I'm reading upside down. I had to take it slow. Come over here, here's the final shape. I guess you're getting kind of two necks together. Looks like there's three necks here. So yeah, there you go, two necks. And then here's the third. 
A on the sheet 3. Bring that in, you'll notice they're connected. Blue circles showing that these tabs are connecting by being folded over. You end up with that. Pretty simple. After that, you jump to the next page and just go to step two and follow the assembly flow charts. Bring in and shape in the parts. As you see down here, when you see something in red, it's indicating all of this is getting folded and the arrow is kind of indicating how red here is kind of showing again. There's a stair step line showing that that's folded again. You end up with that. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Follow through until you get to the end of these first four pages. Then you open up the next sheet, find page five, continue on until you get to the end, and then you're done with your model. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces. And then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. We've talked a bit about tools. We've gone over the instructions ever so briefly. We've got some basic tools and the metal sheets at the ready. Let's put this thing together. I was a little worried about these three parts lining up correctly and this becoming a difficult build, but it was pretty straightforward. Just make sure to bend over the necessary tabs. This tab needed a bit of adjusting. The instructions note to slightly bend out a wing to give the model a more 3D appearance, so I did.
One thing that I completely missed during this build, and I got somewhat lucky, is that part eight, if you look on the instructions, there is a hand for an attention point in a certain area of part eight that needs to line up with the way that it fits. Because the way the tabs are on the back, they have to be placed a certain way for this part to fit on the entire part at the end. I got mine slightly off because I missed that attention point and two of the tabs still lined up so I got lucky but be sure that you try to align the tabs up on part eight with the sigil the proper way so you can attach the sigil to the back plate later. The top of this part is slightly warped because the end that has the slot is a slightly different level than the other end where it meets an edge. I'm guessing this is intentional. I mistakenly bent the tabs on the circular part towards the engraved side when I should have bent them towards the non-engraved side. Easy fix. I don't pull out this 3D printed tool often, it's good for bending long straight sides like this.
In this sub assembly, there is one inside part with a tab that threw me off. At first, I could not understand why the assembly was not sitting flat, but then I worked it out. Otherwise, these pieces are pretty straightforward. The next three pieces go along the edges and have weird angles. This one is pretty simple and the next two took a little work. No big deal though, it was fun to work it out. I had the edge laying on the table in front of me and was trying to bend to follow the angles. I didn't need to get things perfect at first, just close. I can make corrections and adjustments as I'm adding the part on.
As with any build, getting two parts together includes a challenge. This one was not bad, but there was one or two spots where I had a tough time getting the slots over the tabs. I kept edit and managed one tab at a time. And this is what I was talking about earlier with part eight, making sure you lined it up properly according to the attention point. I didn't do that, and the part was slightly shifted to one side. Fortunately, I could still get two of the tabs on, but the third one, I just kind of had to fold out of the way. There it is, all finished and complete, and I am pretty sure this is the easiest Iconics model I have ever put together. Taking it about an hour and 10 minutes, only an hour and 10 minutes, and this thing just looks so gorgeous. So very shiny and sizable and pretty. And I really, really, I have yet to sit down and watch any of the Game of Thrones uh, TV shows. I haven't read any of the books yet. I'd like to at some point. This, but this is right here is really making me want to get the color version of this as well as, as all the other models. But anyway, review coming up very soon if it's not out already. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching. As always, keep on keeping on.